Do you think the DHT architecture will fit into the Web3 ecosystem, being that it's so different from current paradigms? Well, it, it's a little misleading to say that it's so different, right? It's different than a blockchain, but there's a bunch of projects in the space that use DHTs, like most probably famously IPFS, Filecoin, like they're doing their file storage across a, a Kademlia DHT. Um, but I'd say the big difference there to note is that DHTs actually scale and they're much easier to shard than managing a single consensus state on a, on a chain. Um, and they, they scale easily, they shard easily. And if you build them correctly, and by that, what I mean is without the need for any kind of centralized tracker overlay to know which nodes have which, what stuff, then there's no centralized bottlenecks at all. Now, the thing I want to talk about there is if you've been reading and looking in the DAO world, one of the big questions that people have is, is how do we do progressive decentralization? And um, I think this is one of the places where we're going to, where Holochain is going to be an incredible boon for folks who want to do pro progressive decentralization. Because right now there's no way to do a discord on the blockchain. It's, it's not a good it's not a good candidate for decentralization, but on Holochain, it is a good candidate. And, and anything that is data intensive, you can't really do very well on, um, uh, on, the, on any blockchain. It's expensive because of its centralization. And so this goes back to what Arthur was saying about IPFS. Right now, IPFS is one of the favorite places to mint NFTs to. But IPS is an, IPFS is an unvalidated space. So there's another incredible um, use of Holochain is to have that be the storage spot for uh, NFTs and at the same time have that be a validated storage, which is handles a bunch of interesting problems around the um, oracles. And uh, we're going to be coming out soon with a demo app that shows how easy this is to do.